Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to look at aspects of choir direction and training. And I think it will be useful for us to put that in context and to look at questions of not just how we sing, but why do we sing, who sings, what do we sing, and then perhaps how we sing that. The question of why we sing is an interesting one because if you think of it, Singing is like a sort of glue which binds community together. If you think of the way that we sing at a football match or a soccer match, perhaps a, a national anthem on a great national occasion, um, singing at a rally or a march, or even just singing happy birthday at a family occasion. These are all occasions where singing brings a community together. It unites us in pitch and it lengthens speech and it acts as a sort of uh, a means of binding a community together. So that's a, a very good reason why we sing. Um, in the context of a church, of course, those reasons are even heightened, that we sing to bind the community together in worship. We also sing in church because, in the words of a sometime presenter of Coventry Cathedral, um, words without music do not easily soar. I was at an Orthodox service recently, a Greek Orthodox service, and they sing from the beginning of the service to the end. Nothing is ever spoken, and it's almost like why would you speak? We sing because that's what they do in heaven. Worship on earth, mirrors worship in heaven, so we sing. Music is, in that sense, sacramental. It's like a, a framework which leads us from the everyday, from the way we speak, into a heightened sense of what text and words are actually about. It draws us in, perhaps, to a, uh, a sense of the divine, a sense of the transcendent. So I think music is a very powerful agent for us uh, within the context of worship. So these are some of the reasons, perhaps, why we sing. Who sings? Well, in a parish church, and in the, these days, after all the, the upheavals of liturgical reform that all the major Christian traditions have experienced, everyone sings. So it's the, the whole community which is engaged in liturgy and engaged in singing. Um, the song of the people is a very important part of the modern uh, liturgical landscape. And where is the place of the choir in this, we might ask? The choir that once upon a time perhaps sang most of the service and the congregation might have been quite passive. In some places that's still appropriate, particularly um, in the Anglican cathedral tradition, for instance. But in a parish situation, we have to think a little bit more creatively about the role of the choir. The first task of the parish choir in, in the liturgical context is really the leading of the singing, the enabling of the singing of the entire community. And then after that leading and enabling, perhaps we can bring in a rather different aspect, that of reflection, where the choir provides us with an opportunity to step back perhaps from um, wholehearted participation and perhaps engage with the text or a particular aspect of the service in a, in a more meaningful way. In this way, music can be a little bit like a stained glass window or an icon, where you can engage with it, but not so much as the participant or the creator of it, as we do when we sing, for instance, a hymn, but more the beholder of it. And just as you can behold a stained glass window and appreciate the art that has gone into that and perhaps sense something of the, the divine that lies beyond it, so we can do the same with music. A well-chosen, well-rehearsed, well-sung motet or anthem can involve everyone present in what it has to say, regardless of whether they're actually singing it or not. So music, therefore, as I was saying earlier, has this sort of sacramental power. It can draw us through the signs and symbols of the, the language itself into perhaps an inner truth that lies behind that. So, what to sing? Choosing music, I think, is one of the most creative aspects of the life of a church musician, where you're engaging with not just the, the church year, the seasons that follow one after the other, but also delving beneath the surface of the scripture readings of the day, where we have to actually get beneath the surface and find out the truth that might not be apparent on the first reading. And then looking at the ways that music can perhaps bring a text alive as well, to make it a richer experience for those not just who sing it, but those who listen as well. <laughs> 